What is up everybody, it's Adam with the Don Tech, and today I wanted to show you the steps I'm going to take to fix this overheating HP laptop. What we have here is an HP Envy 15M ED0023DX that has a temperature problem. And what we're hoping that we can do today is fix it by repasting the thermal paste and cleaning out the insides. Obviously for starters, what you need is the laptop. And on top of that, we're gonna use some isopropyl alcohol, paper towels, choice of thermal paste, and of course, a screwdriver. We've got two different choices here. The iFixit kit, which is gonna have a little tray to put the screws in, and this fancy little electronic screwdriver. This particular HP has six Phillips head screws and one torque security screw. But as you can see on mine, that torque security screw is already gone and forgotten. So all we have are gonna be the five Phillips. That's gonna be underneath the two rubber pads that go along the bottom of the laptop. The first three are on the top strip here. We have three to my right and then two on the left. And then the other two are gonna be down at the bottom here. These HPs do not like to have these rubber pads come up, so don't be surprised if yours looks like this at the end of the project. And with those five screws and this one screw removed here, you should be able to open up the laptop and then take the bottom piece off. I forgot to mention, you should probably have a spudger pry tool available as well. The easiest way to open this laptop is to have it obviously on the screen side down and then open it up a little bit so you have the base at the top. And you're gonna to wanna to apply a little bit of pressure to split open one of the sides or in the middle there. And once you get that open, usually on the sides over here, you can either put your nails in to try to peel it apart, or if you got some space, you can get the spudger tool in there and do the work that way. So you can run that down the sides if you'd like. You don't have any cabling to worry about, but once you get enough of that open, you can go ahead and just kind of brute force it open the rest of the way. Now, if you have any screws, make sure they're out, because otherwise you will break them out. Now, as you can see inside this case, it's pretty small. The fan is pretty small. It's just got this tiny little portion of the heat sink, and this is actually cooling an i7 processor. It's not dusty at all, so that's not gonna be the concern, but we are getting temperature spikes. So hopefully by taking this heat sink off and repasting it, that will give us better results. So the main things you'll need for this, isopropyl alcohol, paper towel, and your Phillips head screwdriver yet again. So now that you have access to the heat sink, you're gonna have four screws that just need to come out. These are also Phillips, like what you used on the outside of it, so they'll come out pretty easily. They are in number order, which normally means you go in a crisscross sort of pattern. So you'll take them off, one, two, three, four, and then you'll put them back on, one, two, three, four. So with all four of those screws out, you wanna make sure you're gonna carefully find out how the heat sink comes off. This one should not require the fan shroud to come out, but it might. Nope, it does not. So I just use my fingernails and lift it up at the bottom here. You wanna be very careful not to bend this copper heat sink. Any sort of dents or dings inside here will prevent the gas from going through it and it will no longer effectively cool. That is a concern with this particular computer right now that the heat sink is damaged, but the temperatures are okay when it is idle. So right down here, we've got access to the dedicated CPU, which has uh, graphics already on it. That is soldered in, so you can't replace it if it goes bad. Get your isopropyl alcohol, apply it to the paper towel, and then we're gonna carefully clean it off of the CPU. Isopropyl alcohol can dry your hands out, so make sure you wear gloves if you have sensitive hands. If you have any trouble spots that aren't coming out, feel free to get a Q-tip and apply the same methodology. Once we have that all clean, we're gonna move on over to the heatsink portion itself. This one you're gonna to wanna to make sure you're very delicate with. I'm gonna hold it with one hand and then carefully scrape it off with my other hand. You can definitely make a couple of passes and it's better to use a little force than using a lot of force. Also, you probably don't want to refill your isopropyl over the open laptop, but it's okay, I'm a professional. So now as you can see, we have all the thermal paste cleaned off of the heatsink and the CPU. There might still be a little bit of residual thermal paste on the heatsink, 
uh, in the crevices and everything, don't worry about that, that will not be a problem. You can also take this opportunity to look through the vents in this cooler to see if there's any built up dust or hair. This one is pretty clean, all things considered, so I don't even need to worry about cleaning this at all. The next part is gonna be thermal paste. I've got two different types of thermal grizzlies and Corsair. For this particular one, I'm gonna go with my pink thermal grizzly thermal paste that I've got. Maybe this, this should give the best cooling performance out of any that we have. And I would 100% avoid liquid metal. So this particular thermal paste has different applicators that I thought would go on and actually screw on and allow me to use, but apparently I don't. So we're just gonna go ahead and kind of eyeball this methodology to see what we get. We're going for some just tiny X that will cover the heat sink or cover the CPU as a whole, but dots will probably work just fine here. Now thermal paste is non-conductive, unlike liquid metal. So if you have any that spreads between, that is just fine. As you saw when we were cleaning it, we were cleaning the paste off of the entire chip. So, and then the final step is to reapply the heat sink back onto the CPU. Should slide in heat sink first. There we go, okay, it does slide in heat sink first. You wanna gently put this down. And then once the heat sink makes contact with the CPU, you wanna apply a little bit of pressure and keep it there. You don't want to lift this up to make sure that it has applied because if you introduce any air bubbles, that can reduce the cooling effects. And now we're just gonna put it all back together in the same way that we took it apart. That's gonna be in screw number one. And then two and then three and then four. It's also my first time using the screwdriver in a repair. Make sure they're nice and tight. And then that's all there is to it. At this point, you normally want to test it first before you button it all up. But you grab the bottom case that you'd already taken off. This is just gonna flip back on over and go directly on where you had taken it off. There's gonna be some snaps that will hold it in place. You can just gently apply pressure around the outside of the unit. You'll hear plenty of cracks. Don't press too hard or you might crack your screen unless you're I'm just kidding, unless you're like the Hulk. And then you put all the five screws back in where they belong, make sure everything is true, and then turn it on and get to the testing. Here are all those cracks. So we'll pull a hardware monitor up here we're gonna check the package temperature to see the max and the min. It was about 44 degrees Celsius on idle, but it was popping up to 99 degrees Celsius when it was loading up some things previously. So right now we got our max at 71, so that's another spike right there. That could indicate a potential board issue. So what we're gonna do is just continue to use the computer as it is, potentially replace the heatsink if necessary, but I don't think that's gonna be something we're gonna do. It's probably just gonna be used as is and then replaced once it needs to be replaced. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you found it helpful, you know what to do. I'll see you in the next one. And remember, the Don's got your back.